Good day and welcome to Nutanix Enterprise Cloud OS update, right? Also known as Nutanix AOS, Acropolis Operating System. And today we're going to look at AOS 5.19. We'll see what's the new features and the functionality. Let's dive into that session. AOS 5.19 update. So first let's look at this roadmap for our software release cadence. So LTS versus STS. You can see that LTS is the long-term support release, so more stable than some bugs, features, and then it's also some of the new features that's included in the long-term support. And then obviously STS short-term support release. So currently this is 5.19 iOS release. It is part of our STS family. Okay, so just some of the new features and functionality. We'll look at some of the security enhancements, AHV, business continuity, management and automation, and then some storage optimization and some enhancements there as well. First, let's look at security. So one of the new security features, centralized native KMS for remote clusters. Okay, so with AOS 5.19, we continue to simplify that security by just extending that promise of encryption everywhere to new environments. So you now get the ability to just back up that um, ro remote office, bronze office keys as well with your Prism Central instance. Multi-cluster key backup from Prism Central. So in addition to new remote KMS functionality, AS 5.19 also introduces the ability to backup local deployed KMS instances from multiple remote clusters to a central PC instance, making it easy to keep both your data and your keys protected and secure. Microsoft VBS and Credential Guard for AHV. So just some of the other security features that we enhancing. You now have the ability to protect that virtual machine. So when that virtual machine boots up using Secure Boot and VBS and Credential Guard for AHV, we will ensure that the firmware and the software that that virtual machine is booting up with is actually indeed valid. So there's also now enhancements to, to flow. We include the default VDR policy. So it's the ability to use user identity group and segment VDI desktops with micro segmentation from Nutanix flow. This also allows security policy to be dynamically mapped to users and simplify the creation of policies. So you can see that with the new flow identity firewall configuration workflow, so we move the VM filter and category assignment to the single UI. It includes VM by name string and match and also includes all VMs options. As you can see in that image, very simple. In your update VDI security policy in Flow, you've got the VMs by name radio button, default policies. You can actually search also VM by, uh, by name. You can then add these VMs to the default policy and also keep the default policy on, the, on user logon or radio button then to include all the VMs in this policy. Let's look at some AHV enhancements. So vGPU live migration. Uh, we support obviously virtual GPUs or uh, you can pass through that GPU directly using NVIDIA grid to your virtual machines running on AHV. Previously, you could not unfortunately uh, live migrate them. You had to power them down and then migrate them and start them up in the new node. Now you have got the ability to live migrate that virtual machine with the vGPU, enabling you to do a live migration and have less downtime for your business critical application. We also improve the physical network management. So with 5.19, the management of the network uplinks and bonds is enhanced and centralized with Prism Central. This starts with the introduction of a cluster with a logical virtual switch concept. So we're kind of moving away from the traditional naming convention and we introduce this new virtual switch object now, right? So that allows you to migrate workflows for existing bonds and configurations. It replaces that breach or BR terminology. It's gonna simplify that workload for your cluster. You can choose your bond type. So active, active, active backup, active, active with Mac pinning. You can then filter, select uplinks and ports. If you've got a big cluster, that's very useful. And then Prism Central for comprehensive configuration and visibility across multiple clusters. Another feature is our cross-container vDisk migration. So this is disk migration. So AOS storage containers are used for logical organization 
and providing the stories features such as compression, DDP erasure coding. There are times when a desirable to move VDisk to change logical grouping or take advantage of that configured storage optimization. Well, in 5.19, we are making it easier to migrate virtual disks between different storage containers. As shown in the illustration, it's very simple. I want to move those two VDisks to a new container. Very simple. They move to a new container that's got compression and erasure coding that is enabled and they reside there. So no need to create a new virtual machine or new VDisk. You can simply migrate them between containers now. So prison management and operations, what's new there? As you guys know, we have independent Prism Central release. So in Prism Central release 2020.7, we have moved to an independent release cycle of AOS. Prism Central can now introduce new features very quickly. If you wanna go check it out, there's that link, go check out the upgrade paths. In this new release of Prism Central, Operational automation with XPlay. So in the past, we still had XPlay or Crossplay. What is it? It's that automated link intelligent with automated actions. So no code or low code automatic um, playbooks for your infrastructure. One click centralized upgrades to hundreds of clusters without disruption. What's the benefits? Smart automation help with scale of business, low admin overhead. So it really removes the lid storm and let the admin focus on what is important. Okay, how do you need to uh, create a playbook? Very simple. You set your trigger, you define the action that needs to happen, you save and enable it, and that playbook will then go do the necessary action like adding a memory or a VCPU. We are further enhancing uh, that feature of playbooks with cross pilot so the background on cross play it offers low code no code optimization but may not be sufficient for certain infrastructure issues so triggers actions may not always have the desired outcome no way for the user to specify an optimal threshold so we're enhancing that previous feature we talked about for playbooks with cross pilot so this new functionality autopilot for, for playbooks what is needed you need a playbook need a KPI target, you need the range for the KPI, and then the monitor and duration of your KPI, and then obviously the number of attempts that is allowed, as you guys can see in the image. Crosspilot will intelligently guide the infrastructure metrics within defined boundaries and achieve your desired state. So what do you need? You need that playbook, you need Crosspilot, and then the outcome is that remediation for your infrastructure. How does that work? Okay, looking at this example, we're going to stress the memory of a virtual machine. So the parameter R is out of bounds. As you guys can see that the memory is fluctuating based on a workload or anything that is running currently, uh, like a month in job. You can see that the first attempt is going to increase the memory for that virtual machine. There will be a second attempt, third attempt based on your uh, threshold that you set. And then obviously your desired outcome will then be achieved. It will then have that memory of that virtual machine in the range that is acceptable, um, thus achieving an optimal KPI for that virtual machine. Infrastructure management and ops journey. So we have these flavors of Prism Central, Prism Starter, Prism Pro and Prism Ultimate. We now introducing some new features underneath the Prism Ultimate tier, which is looking at application delivery, app anomaly monitoring, cost metering, and chargeback. New Prism tier, so that is Prism Ultimate. We are adding that ability to discover and monitoring applications such as SQL servers. It offers a clear insight and cost metering on-prem resources. So now it's integrating our Xi Beam features into Prism Ultimate or Prism Central that you can now intentionally report cost visibility, deliver chargeback on reports and cost centers. So in essence, doing that chargeback and then all current Prism Pro tier features to remain within this license. So you still get Ultimate and the Prism Pro tier um, features. There's a 90 day trial when you upgrade. So give it a go. 
So talking a bit about that non-AOS via monitoring, I think this is a great enhancement to Prism Central. So not only can you monitor your own Nutanix infrastructure, if you've got legacy three-tier infrastructure, you can bring that now into uh, Prism Central and get that inside and monitoring from that three-tier infrastructure. So what's the advantages? You can apply XFIT machine learning to that entire virtual infrastructure. Sole tool for connecting insights across ENV to smart automation. In your key capabilities, keep in mind capacity planning, metric visibility in PRISM and anomaly detection and customer alerts for your three tier or entire virtual estate. Let's look at some of that business continuity enhancements across cluster life plan failover. So not all business continuity plans are for disasters. Being able to perform routine maintenance or upgrades without disruption of operations is an important part of BCDR strategy. In 5.19, AHV now it simplifies workloads to migrate applications live as part of that plane failover. Any VM protected by synchronous replication and recovery plan can be live migrated between two destinated clusters. Cross-cluster live plan failover UI, some enhancements there. So let's look at some of the options for plan failover. So first option allows you to migrate all of your virtual machines as part of the final recovery plan in Prism Central. And then the second one allows you to do a single VM to be migrated. We will always bring back the VM on the primary in failure scenarios described above. Multi-site replication for Leap, also one of our new features. If you don't know what Leap is, Leap is our automated DR for new Nutanix infrastructure. So what is the new features that we're bringing here? It gives you that DR mobility, private or public cloud target. So I can now use my Nutanix uh, Leap to automate my DR to Nutanix clusters, AWS Azure or Xileap disaster recovery as a service. It also brings that uh, policy-based replication to AOS now. It protects against localized DCs heat with same disaster event of loss of data. And then it gives you that unique protection policies and recovery plans per DR instance. So support for unique RPOs. Some storage enhancements, dynamic uplock. So Nutanix AOS leverages the uplock as a persistent write buffer for certain IO operations. So for that random write IO. New functionality, the uplock can grow dynamically to a larger size beyond six gig. So six gig was the standard, it can now grow larger than that. It also benefits the node because it will have fewer active VDISCs and then it gives you that performance uh, improvement for heavy write large block sizes uh, for sensitive workloads. So usually block sizes that is bigger than 64K. It gives you that 20% improvement for database restore operations. In addition to that adaptive uplock improvements, AS5.9 is also going to optimize which data is written to the uplock to maximize the performance for both random and sequential workloads. So data written in those large blocks in sequential streams doesn't benefit from buffering in the uplock like small random writes do. So AS dynamically chooses which data is written to the uplock and which data skips it and goes directly to the extent store. So AOS 519 enhances that algorithm, effectively identifying sequential write streams to skip the uplock. So it's really gonna give you that two times performance improvement throughput during a steady state. DB workloads, obviously up to 40% improvement to leverage TPM transactions per minute. So you really get that improvement on your performance. Okay, um, some enhancements to our storage over provisioning widget. So as you can see in Prism element, when you log in on the right hand side, you'll have that storage over provisioning widget. Okay, so here are some of those storage over provisioning widget images. It will just show you that the administrator can configure the limit of the storage over provisioning ratio. So once the actual ratio reaches 70% of the set limit, the color will turn amber. And once it reaches 90%, or more the color would turn red. So just easier for you to identify your storage um, that is provisioned. 
And then lastly, um, if you want to go test drive Nutanix, visit our Nutanix.test drive. It's that four hour on demand demo environment for you to get hands on um, and test our different solution areas. So build that private cloud, look at hybrid cloud deployment, secure your application, automate IT operations, eliminate backup silos, simplify database operations. Make sure to go check out and test drive the platform for yourself. And there you have it, eh? some great and exciting features and functionality in our new AOS 5.19 update. Be sure to check out the other ones that's coming soon, our new releases, and um, see you next time. Bye.